welcome to Scrapping Coffee. We are still working on our box and folio project and I've completed the whole folio um, and today I'm going to make with you the booklet to go inside and we are also going to make an extra insert but you also owed me um, the scoring for piece K to make the closure on the waterfall and that's what I'm going to do first. So I made this slide and lock closure and for that we needed to do something with piece K but I figured it out after I've matted these closure pieces. So I will show you what I've done with that. And we're going to make the booklet to go in that pouched pocket. So a little sneak peek of my matting process here. But I will do a project chair on the end of it. So piece K is a piece that's going to measure 2 inches by 3 and a quarter. And you're going to need a piece of pattern paper that's slightly under those measurements. So it will fit on there. And you are going to score your piece K. And what I've done is I've scored this piece with a 3 and a quarter inch side on top at 7 eighths of an inch and then at 2 and a quarter of an inch and that will give you a spacing of 1 and 3 eighths of an inch in between your score lines so the closure pieces were 1 and a quarter so it's 1 8 of an inch wider than your closure pieces of the waterfall and I do recommend to score your pattern paper as well before you attach it onto your cardstock to prevent it from cracking because um, yeah I'm doing it the wrong way and it, it's cracking here with me so also it's good to check your pattern paper how it reacts to scoring and folding because not all pattern paper will react to it very well there are pattern papers that just crack no matter what you do so check it but then on the other hand I place an embellishment over my closure so um, if it cracks and you won't even see it so but here I just um, placed the pattern paper on top of the cardstock and then I've scored it again but it's better to score your pattern paper first and then line up your score lines when you attach the pieces together so I'm scoring at the same spot that I scored the cardstock that's 7 8 of an inch and 2 and a quarter and then I'm going to carefully fold on those score lines and don't burnish them. Normally I always burnish my score lines but not in this case. So I'm just carefully folding on it. And then I'm going to place some double sided tape that I will combine with some wet glue on the edges. So I'm going to do one edge on the cardstock side completely to the edge and then on the other side I'm going to do it on top of the pattern paper. So you can also place your pattern paper after you uh, attached the two sides together and you just wrap it around but I thought it was a little bit easier to go this way. So just removing the tape backing And because you didn't burnish your folds, it, it tends to stand and uh, wants to come up. So that's why I combine it with some wet glue to make it a little stronger. And then when you close this, you need to keep it in place for a second. Let the glue dry. So I'm closing it, holding it in place. And then I carefully burnish on top. Of the overlapping so try not to burnish on your folds but just I'm trying to get a really good stick here and then it, it's a little flat now and you want it to be a little bit uh, more opened up so I just got a flat bone folder and got that into the piece and rounded it a little bit from the inside And so with these measurements you should be able to slide it over that closure piece of the waterfall. So it should go over and then it should also fit on when you have both flaps 
on top of each other just make sure they line up nicely and then that will keep everything in place and then what i done is i just got an embellishment out of the collection and yeah just stick it on there to make it look a little bit better so that's the closure for the waterfall and like i said earlier in the tutorial if you don't like this closure if it's too much of a fuss then of course you can use any closure that you like so now onto the booklet it's a pretty simple booklet and you only need three pieces of cardstock and i've uploaded the cutting guide for this onto my website scrapandcoffee.com so you can find the measurements for the booklet on there and for the folio in the box but please keep in mind that it's not complete uh, yet so it will be updated the cutting guide so i've called the pieces for the uh, booklet uh, double a double b and double c and double b and double c have a score line on one side and we've placed the tape you should have placed it on the bumpy side for both uh, for piece b b so piece double b tape goes on the bumpy side and i realized that i've done it on the wrong side here so i just decided to uh, go against my rule and fold towards the dented side and it will work it's not a, not the end of the world but i really want to attach it on the back side of double a because um, i need a little bit of spacing on the other side of the piece that, which i will show you in a little bit so i'm going to try and line up both pieces where i'm still able to see my score line on piece double B and line up the bottom and the top and then I'm going to fold piece B over piece A and here I just needed to work it a little bit more to keep it straight because I was folding towards the dented side but I'm just holding it where I want and actually it wasn't too bad, I just wanted to make sure that it, um, it folded the way I wanted it to fold. So once you fold it over and burnish that score line, you will see that you have a little bit of spacing on your right side of your page. It doesn't go all the way to the end and that's what I want in this case. Normally you would have wanted to line up nicely, but here I wanted to have a little bit of spacing. Now for piece double C, I did place the tape on the dented side. And you're going to fold on your score line and then i'm going to attach it on the right side of piece aa and i'm going to offset it i'm going to place it three quarters of an inch from the top and i do it with a reason because i already know what i want to do for a closure but you can place this however you like if you want to center it that's fine if you want to off center it to the bottom that's fine as well but i did this with my closure in mind so I'm lining it up with the edge of piece A and three quarters of an inch from the top. And that's the whole booklet actually. So pretty simple. You can use a magnet to keep it closed. I'm going to fold piece B in first and then piece C on top of that. So you can use a magnet to keep it closed or a swing tab. But I'm going to make a little insertion point on the bottom where I can place some extra photos that will keep piece C in place so for now i'm going to place this booklet in that pouch pocket and you will see it fits in there very nicely and the measurements on here with the 3 8 of an inch and everything that's for a reason it's with the photo mats in mind so that will go in there and you still have enough room for everything to nicely fit in the folio so i have some space left in the box so i'm going to make an insert and for that you're also going to need some different pieces of cardstock you can find the measurements in the cutting guide and i'm going to start with the base with piece a b and c and i've placed the tape again for piece b and c on the bumpy side and these pieces will have two score lines at half an inch and five eighths of an inch and you're going to place the tape on the bumpy side between the cut edge and the half inch score line and you want to taper the bottom of that flap because you're going to line up the bottom piece the bottom of the pieces but i just did it on both sides so i was sure that 
um, yeah, I tapered the right side. So also PC has two score lines with that one eighth of an inch gusset. And also for this piece, I'm going to taper. So tape on the bumpy side for these pieces. And what we are going to do is we're going to line up the bottom. So you have a little bit of space on the top. I'm um, going to fold on my first score line a little bit, but I do suggest that you pre-fold both your score lines because this is a heavier weight cardstock and I had a little bit of trouble uh, getting that gusset uh, folded after I attached everything. So maybe you want to pre-fold it at forehand. So I'm using the grid of my cutting mat here to have it nicely straight because I only have my bottom to line it up with. So I'm just using the lines on my cutting surface. And again, just make sure that you're still able to see your first score line when you place piece A on top of piece B. Because you want to be able to nicely fold that over. Just like we did for the whole project. And I'm going to do the same thing for PC. We're going to place PC on the right side of piece A. And I'm going to turn everything uh, around because it's easier for me to attach it that way. So I'm going to turn it over. So now I'm going to have to line it up at the top. Try to get the tape back and removed. So again, I'm just using that grid on my cutting surface to try and get it nice and even as best as I could without getting my head in the camera. So when I have it where I want it, I'm just going to hold it in place, carefully remove the tape backing. So now I have to fold on all the score lines. Of course, I'm going to burnish it really quick like I always do and this was quite a struggle for me to get both score lines nicely folded so that's why I told you to pre-fold at forehand it's easier so I really had to get my nails in here to push on that second score line <laughs> to get that gusset reinforced because it's it was terrible <laughs> But after some time I've got it. I'm really trying to pinch on that score line here. And carefully burnish so I wasn't off. And there we go. So you have to do the same thing for your C piece. Fold on both your score lines, and this was a little bit easier. But so this is the base of the insert, and now um, we are going to make the closure. So that's piece D, also two score lines at half an inch and five eighths of an inch. And again, I'm going to taper that half inch, and here we are going again making that offset closure. So we have to make some pencil marks, and we are going to do that on the dented side. So tape again is on the bumpy side and I'm going to make a score, uh, sorry, a pencil mark at five and a half inch from your left bottom corner. And then we are going to make a pencil mark on the sides one and a half inch from your second score line. So from the five, eight inch score line, you're going to make a pencil mark at one and a half inches and you will do that on both sides. Then I'm going to connect the pencil marks. You don't really have to, you can just line it up in your paper trimmer if you want, but sometimes this can be a little bit easier. But then don't forget to erase your pencil marks if you are still able to see them after cutting. So I'll just connect those and we are going to cut on those pencil marks. Just line it up. And 
and here I went I went wrong I went almost wrong because I cut and then I, my paper slid so luckily no harm done and you don't see it after I've got it right but sometimes that happens so now we can fold on our score lines and here I learned from the past so I am folding on both my score lines before I'm going to attach the piece to make it a little bit easier when it's on there so we are going to place this on the top of the insert and that's where you have that little space and I'm going to attach it on the back of piece A again so I'm going to place the insert on top of piece D again so you can see your score line line up the edges and make sure you can see your score line so once you have it where you want it Stick it, keep it in place and remove the rest of your tape backing. And then you can fold on both of your score lines. So you have that one eighth of an inch gusset on top as well. And I just find the 1 8 of an inch gusset is a little bit harder to work with, but um, I also think it gives me a better result than when the insert will be curved because of all the bulkiness inside. So I just prefer to work with the gusset even though it's a little bit harder. So now we go to piece E, which is a photo mat, photo flap with one score line, tape goes on the dented side, you can fold and burn it on your score line and I'm going to place this flap on the inside of the insert on top of piece A and I'm going to place it a little bit more to the top than to the bottom and I've decided to place it about half an inch from the top but you can place it anywhere you like but I did this with the bulkiness in mind so I I'm going to um, have the bulkiness spread out over the insert a little bit. So I'm just lining it up here with the edge of piece A. So that's extra photo space in there. And then we are going to do one more thing for this insert. And for that we are going to need piece F and piece G. I'm just turning around the letter here so it's not upside down. Piece F has one score line with tape on the dented side and piece G has three score lines also with tape on the dented side and that's going to be a pocket. So I'm going to taper piece F and I'm going to miter piece G. So I'm just going to cut right across that intersection of the score lines. To reduce the bulk. So I fold on the score line on piece F and I burnish it but I am going to lay it flat on my work surface. It's easier for me and I'm going to also fold and fold and burnish on my score lines of piece G making sure that there is no overlapping of my half inch flaps on the back. And if you do have overlapping you need to cut it a little bit more in. So we are going to place this pocket lining up the right bottom corner of both pieces. So that's where you're going to start and then you want to have about 1 8 of an inch space between your pocket and your score line on piece F. You want that so you can have a nice flip without it catching on to the page. So I'm just removing one side of the, uh, of the tape here just to show you that that is a possibility as well because normally I will remove it all at once and I'm just lining up that right bottom corner and placing it on that edge and actually this is a little bit more difficult for me for some reason so I'm going to place it there burnish and then I'm going to remove the tape backing on the bottom and the other side 
But still you need to be a little bit careful with placing it, that you line it up on the bottom as well. So this is a way you can attach your pockets. If you're not comfortable with removing all the tape backing at once. So now this flap will also go on the inside of the insert and this will go on the left side of piece A all the way to the bottom. I'm lining up the bottom edge of both pieces and I'm placing it just inside the score lines and you want to have about 1 8 of an inch spacing on your right here so the insert can close nicely. So uh, here again that piece A is uh, standing up a little bit so I'm placing my bone folder on there to keep it flat. So really keep an eye on your score lines again and on the bottom edge. And then you can remove the tape backing. So I'm going to fold in the flap first, then the pocket. Then piece C and then piece B and then D will be the closure. And um, it looks fairly simple but it gives you a lot of photo opportunity. I've almost completed decorating this insert by now and it's um, turning out pretty great. Uh, I really love it so I hope you are going to try it. So I'm using a magnet again to close it. Making sure your gussets are standing up. Don't place your magnet too close to the edges. So here I'm just making sure that all the gussets are standing up. And then carefully place that magnet where you want it. And I'm placing some double sided tape on top of that magnet to ensure it a little bit more. So it comes together pretty quick, pretty easy. And it's just extra photo opportunity in your project. Now I'm working on one more uh, project to go with this. Uh, because the paper collection that I'm using, Remember the Magic by Paper Phenomenon, is giving me that opportunity to do so. So I will be back with one more uh, construction video. And then I will have a final project share for this. In the middle here, no, I almost forgot, you have room for an 8x10 photo. That's what the whole insert was about. So that's the insert. So I want to say thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Enjoy the rest of your day.